inspired too. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, it's so great also that Ipsos Reid was here um, talking about the Canada you think you know that maybe you don't. I would actually argue um, that this is not a picture of Canada. Um, this is a satellite photo taken from space of the North American continent or part of it depicting rocks and trees and water and ice and all that. This maybe gets a little bit closer in that it uh, circumscribes our, uh, our just under 10 million square kilometers of land mass. Um, this also isn't really a picture of Canada, although it gets a little bit closer. It's the canvas upon which we paint the picture of our lives and where about 34 million of us from all over the world uh, call our homes. But to me, this isn't a picture of Canada because a country isn't really a country unless you've got a story. That's how countries work. They have a story that they tell themselves and that they tell, them, that they tell the world. And you have to have some kind of agreement about what that story is. It can change. It always is changing. But there's got to be some kind of agree uh, agreement about it. That is the nature of citizenship, which becomes a bit difficult in Canada because it is changing so rapidly. And because in, in the vacuum created where we don't know how to talk to each other about our stories, we don't really listen, we're all spread along that long, thin line near, near the US border, into that vacuum come these, uh, well, you know them. I think they were all, in fact, at the closing ceremonies of the Winter Olympics uh, in Vancouver. Um, and, and they're fine. Like, I have nothing against these things as symbols of Canada. Um, uh, but they don't really tell who we are either. This was the problem that I wanted to solve uh, around 1995. I got the idea. And after a long series of events that I would tell you in a much longer presentation, uh, I began collecting these other uh, symbols. Now, these other symbols, well, they may not look like much. Um, in fact, some of these things aren't much. Uh, some of these things are construction scrap or uh, picked up off the bottom of Halifax Harbor or off the tundra uh, in northern Canada. On the other hand, some of these things are really, really famous. The point is that each and every one of these pieces tells a story. And each and every one of these pieces is part of this here guitar. In total, I gathered 64 pieces for the original project. 63 are in the guitar itself. There's a 64th on the strap. I've since added a few more to the case in the strap, which I can show you later. We officially nicknamed this guitar Voyageur at the Festival de Voyageur in Winnipeg in February of 2008. Winnipeg in February, people. Come on. <laughs> Work with me. There's a Canadian experience. Uh, I highly recommend. This is <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Susan Bahariel of the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, she's the person who suggested the name Voyageur, and we invited her out to uh, participate in that naming ceremony. So I don't have time to tell you about all the pieces, of course, um, uh, but I will take you inside the guitar and show you a little bit, give you a sense of what the project's about. Here, of course, we have the province of Quebec, uh, the northern part of which is known as Nunavik. This is the Inuit territory in Quebec. Uh, pretty sparsely populated in terms of people, pretty heavily populated in terms of caribou. Uh, <laughs>